Hello, my name is Scott Gross, and I'm joined by Fire Chief Richard O'Brien. And uh, this is one of a series of television shows that I'll be doing about local government and especially about the upcoming town elections on March 11, 2014, about some of the Warren articles that voters will be presented with uh, in the next, uh, next few weeks. So I asked uh, Rich to come down to the studio, and uh, we're partnering up with uh, Dave Souter, our producer. So we're going to be showing you some, some slides of the fire department sta the stations. And uh, we're going to be talking about um, article number 18 specifically, which is the fire station improvement plan. And uh, Rich, this has been a, a something that's been discussed about for a pretty long time. And um, can you just give us a little bit of an overview about you know, the genesis of, of the improvements of these stations? Sure. Uh, I arrived here as chief about seven years ago. And even before my time, there had been numerous studies in reports that all, all indicated that our current fire, fire stations do not meet the needs and demands of, of the town's fire services. Uh, so with that, uh, we carefully look forward in, in determining what's necessary uh, to either improve the current stations we have or uh, construct new stations. So in, 19, in 2012, the Board of Selectmen uh, uh, created a, a fire station improvement committee. Now the committee was uh, comprised of uh, members of the fire department, the community, the budget committee, um, planning and planning development, uh, public works in, in other department uh, departments in town. And they all concluded after looking at our current stations and their current demands that, that we, we put on these buildings day in, day out, is the best thought was and the most cost effective approach would be to take the existing stations and renovate them and then improve them. Uh, with, with some expansions. Uh, so today what we'll do is we'll go over each of the stations and, and show you what that committee came up, uh, came up with and further what a, an architect and a construction engineer uh, both suggested that could be done on each of these buildings. Uh, what's interesting is, is the, these stations were built, uh, for example, in, in um, 1959, the Church Street Station was built. 55 years ago, and uh, the call demands back then were just a fraction of what we do today. Uh, for example, uh, you know, in, 1950, in 1959, we had approximately 68 calls that we handled annually. Only 68 calls? Just 68, and now we handle over 2,300 calls, calls a year. Now, the, of those 68, was that primarily, I would assume, fire, right, back, related? Back the day, there was just, a, it was fire related. Looking at some of the old records, which is interesting, is is a lot of it was uh, the building fires, the chimney fires, and the grass fires. And uh, they were called the dump fires. They had to go down the dump frequently. Uh, but uh, in, then in 1969, uh, you'll see in the graph coming up that, that uh, we, we experienced just about 108 calls. And that's when, that's, when st that's when the station in Mast Road in the Pernardville section was built. And then so on, uh, you'll see that uh, 1975, the station on Terrell Hill Road by Black Brook, that was constructed. And so even, it, even over the decades, you see that, that our call demands uh, have exceeded immensely. And uh, we've really done, not, we've done nothing to the stations to, to expand from, from there on out. So we're re really, we're just busting at the seams. Um, because of the growth issues, we also are experiencing just building issues. Uh, we have, uh, in general, we, the electrical systems are maxed out in these buildings. Um, they're not very energy efficient. They're, you know, 30, 40, 50, 50 year energy, energy efficiencies built into these buildings that really haven't been improved, improved upon. Uh, in in the, just the functionality. So uh, we can start by, by looking at some of this, the current, current situations that we have. I thought it was kind of interesting. If you can go to the next slide, uh, David. Um, this was a depiction of, this was an annual report and uh, this shows a photograph of the Church Street Station in the lower uh, left-hand corner and in actually in, in the lower right-hand corner as well. And um, I, to me, I thought it was kind of a very telling because really not a whole lot has changed. I mean, obviously, a, that's a police car in that, in that photograph, but um, things have changed a lot over the years. And unfortunately, is it safe to say that our fire stations really haven't had any significant improvements. Right, the fire stations have kept up. For example, on, the, uh, on your screen you see the 1962 uh, Towns Annual Report. That's the cover right there. 
And what that is, they, they're, they're showcasing the, the, new, the new stations, the new facilities, the new buildings in town, and, and uh, the Church Street Station was one of them. And you see, if you were drove, drove by that today, it looks pretty much the same way it, is, it, it be, did back in 1962. And the reason why you have a, have a uh, police cruiser parked in front of it is because when they initially built the station, it was a combined police and fire station. Yeah, and so the police department was there also. Uh, but as you see, we building hasn't expanded since then. All right. So I think, you know, Rich, what, we're, what we'd like to try to show the, the public is, is really, you know, the needs that the community has and how, how they have evolved over, you know, over the years. And I think one thing that's pretty evident is just the equipment, the trucks themselves. And, uh, you know, for those who have who've been around the community for a really long time, you know, it's fair enough to say that the fire engines and the apparatus that is used by the fire department were much smaller. Is that fair enough? To without, say? without a doubt, and and for example, the the modern apparatus that we that we deal with today, they're built to deal with more than one operation. Uh, for example, back uh, decades ago, you would buy a what we call a pumper, a pumper truck. It had a pump on it, maybe a little bit of hose, and that was it. It had a pump on it. Uh, then you had a hose wagon. It carried a roll of hose, and it, it carried your hose. And the other one, you had you know your ladder truck that just right. carried ladders. And so now we have we have we have all these combination uh, elements put into into one truck. For example, we can have a pumper tanker that holds a, just a, a massive amount of water, so a lot of hose, and it's got a pump. We've got a tower ladder that's got a pump in it, it has water in it. It's got a it's got a tower ladder and uh, ground ladders. So they're they're multi, multi multifunctional vehicles now, and that's the way that's the way you need to operate now tactfully tactfully um, in in fire service. So when you're looking at the current stations in, in the modern apparatus, they just don't fit. Right, and that, I think that's a pretty good point. And if we could go to this slide right now, um, I, I remember look, going to the station, and I was just amazed, and you know, how does a driver, how does a fire, fireman, firefighter, how do they park this, these, these trucks? And, and this photograph, I think, is a really good indication. And if you can kind of elaborate you know, right now, what what you're seeing on your screen to the uh, to the right on your screen is is far right is an ambulance, but yeah. in the middle is the uh, is the tower tower ladder, tower ladder. Yeah. and um, that's a fairly large large vehicle. Can you just kind of give us uh, you know what some of the issues are with that? Well, the tower ladder, the overall height of that vehicle is 10 feet. It's a unique vehicle where we had to specifically uh, manufacture that vehicle to fit into that station. Uh, that that vehicle is actually 47 feet long, uh, but our concern was the height of that vehicle and the width of it, actually, because the uh, most of the fire trucks now uh, they they are as much as 120 inches wide. Uh, this vehicle is 99 inches wide, and so at the Church Street station and most of the other stations, the doors are they're they're maxed out at about 11 feet tall. So that's that's as tall as we could go. And a, and a modern station like you see in here now is is the Ware Fire Department. It's a modern station. The, the typical door, door size and width is 14 feet, and that allows for, for these larger apparatus to uh, operate freely in and out of these openings. What we're, what we're experiencing now is the fact that uh, we have to creep through the, the, our current doors so we don't either create damage to the building or create damage to the vehicles. And I think that a really interesting you know, point is, uh, is cost. And, um, you know, one of the things that kind of amazed me was the fact that when we have to, because our fire stations are the way they are, they have not been renovated in decades, um, when we have to replace a, a fire engine or a ladder, a tower, tower ladder, um, we have to do it specialty. And uh, I think this next slide, uh, if, Rich, if you can kind of talk through this, I mean, this basically represents a significant cost factor because we have to customize our equipment. And that, yeah, I wanted to give an example of what happened uh, when we purchased the tower ladder uh, so we could make it fit in our station. Here we have from the same, same manufacturer, uh, they were able to, they were gracious enough to give us this information. If we were able to, to order a standard size tower ladder from this company that had this exact same features as the one we actually got, but the fact that it was able to go up to over 12 feet versus being very careful to not to exceed 10 feet, uh, it cost more money to do so. Uh, the vehicle that we have now costs nearly a million dollars versus a, a standard vehicle it, at that year in 2010 
uh, that vehicle cost almost eight hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. So, so this, so the, it cost the cost additional one hundred fifty thousand dollars just to have our vehicle specially built to fit in our station. Thanks, Rich. Uh, you know, one of the things that I think is important for for folks to know, and I'm so glad that you've highlighted this uh, in in the slide that you had, was this was this tower ladder that. Uh, we received a significant grant from the government, and um, I just wanted to kind of just digress for, for a little bit. On the town warrant, you're going to see a petition article, which is petition warrant article number 31. And that article uh, was presented by some private citizens, and it seeks to rescind the powers of the Board of Selectmen, our, our, uh, our selectmen in town, so that they would be unable to accept or expend grants without the express permission of the voters at the town meeting. One of the problems with that is that over the years, the town has received millions of dollars in, uh, in grants from a variety of uh, federal, state, and local sources, as well as some, some large gifts. Um, by always having to wait until March, uh, it really does hurt our chances for some of these grants because some of them are time sensitive. And I would urge voters to, uh, to really take a good look at that article, and I would hope that that you would uh, would vote no on on that one because I think it does it it does hamper our selectmen and more importantly grants are an opportunity for us to actually lower our tax rate because it's money that is coming uh, from other sources other than local taxation so I uh, I would really strongly urge folks to give that some serious thought and weigh your decision carefully um, so as I digress and I apologize Rich for you know for that. Um, but I wanted, I just wanted to make, make that clear is you've done a phenomenal job in your tenure of securing grants for a variety of, uh, of things uh, that otherwise would have been, you know, done through, through taxes. Since, since I, since I, my, my arrival here about seven years ago, um, I've been able to capture nearly $1.5 million in, in grants. And in the, you write a lot of them. When you get notif notified of, of a possible award, uh, you, there's a window. There's probably a 30 or 60 day window to either accept the award or not accept the award. And for example, with the uh, tower ladder truck, uh, the, the feds offered uh, nearly $713,000 of grant funds towards that vehicle. Uh, but they only gave us about 30 days to, to either accept or, right. or, or deny this award. And it would have never happened if, if, uh, if it unfortunately had to go to a town meeting or to town vote. Right. And just to simplify things for folks, uh, that type of money you're talking probably about 50 to 60 cents in the tax rate. So uh, for the average home, that would be about $120 that you saved because it was a federal grant. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda quickly go through some of the existing conditions of the three fire stations that we have. So, so bear with us and please bear with uh, our, uh, Dave, our producer, as we go through some of these slides. But uh, we're gonna go to the first slide which is gonna depict the uh, Terrell Hill Road Fire Station. And Rich, if you can as we go through this, and, and Dave, feel free to, to kind of go through uh, the next couple of slides to kind of show uh, folks what, what conditions we have in, in here. Sure. Uh, Terrell Hill Road is, is, is at the corner of uh, Terrell Hill Road and Black Brook Road. It's a what we call two-bay station. It was constructed back, constructed back in 1975 by volunteers and by using volunteer, um, volunteer materials and, uh, and uh, the town purchased the property. Uh, but we're running the same problem here with the fact that, uh, yeah, if you want to go to the next slide, uh, Dave, it, you'll see that the, the, the truck that, that's uh, stationed out here is one of the only trucks that we have left in the fleet that's still fit in the station. Uh, because this, this one really has some tight clearance issues and the fact that uh, if you look at the next slide too, as we back up the truck, uh, even that truck nearly strikes the top of the door and the side doors when we get in there. And uh, it, it's really, really tight. Um, and once we get it in there, it's uh, very close to striking the heating system that's, that's uh, located in the, uh, the apparatus bay there also. Uh, in, that, in that station, there's a number, numerous other problems. We have uh, obviously heating issues that, that, that uh, go along in there to keep it garage temperature. Uh, we maintain two, actually two heater, heater units there, one with uh, propane and one with oil. Yeah, we also have uh, the electrical system in this, this building is, is uh, maxed out. Uh, it, it can't take any more additions uh, to whatsoever, and uh, the lighting system is just uh, inadequate. Uh, so this, this station definitely needs um, a lot of improvements when it, when it comes to uh, what we call soup to nuts, when it comes to 
uh, energy efficiencies and just all the operations end of it as far as uh, fire operations. In the next slide, you'll see a, uh, a proposed um, construction look of what the new uh, Chapel Hill Road fire station would, would look like. Uh, what we want to do is that, you know, it's important to, to, uh, to add when we talk to the construction engineers and the architects is they said that your current stations, uh, they said the, the, I'll quote them, they said the bones are still good. Um, what, what that means is they can still salvage the walls and the structure, uh, but they can improve on it with, with the insulation and you know, electrical and you know, all the other components, but they felt that the, the main core, the core of each of the stations were still good. So in this particular case, but they said, but, but for now, um, if, if you go much longer, they said, uh, it may not be worth salvaging the, the, uh, the buildings that we have. Okay, so there is a, the architects and the engineers felt that there was a window of opportunity that we could renovate these buildings now, but if it, if it went lo on longer, then that possibility would diminish. Is that fair right. enough to say? And they said that most buildings um, constructed in the, the fashion that the, you're seeing here, that we currently have, last, you hope to last 40 years. And we're at that point now where um, these buildings are at the maximum of their life. Um, and if you improve on them now, uh, you'll extend that life. If you defer this any further, um, you jeopardize whether you can do that or not. And this was a station that was built largely by volunteers, correct? By volunteers and by donated materials. Uh, so a lot of the, for example, I spoke to one of the gentlemen that, that helped uh, construct the station and he was pointing out, the, for example, the exterior doors were donated from a, um, uh, a demolished building down, okay. in, down in Massachusetts, kind of give you an idea. All right. Well, um, David, we can go to the next slide. Now we're going to be starting to talk about the, um, the Church Street Station. And this is a photograph of the Church Street Station located uh, in the village. And it, we showed it earlier. That was the one from the 1960... 1959. 59, I yep. apologize. Um, Elvis was king uh, back then. And um, again, let's, uh, let's walk through some of these slides. If we go to the next slide, David. Yeah, the, this slide depicts when, you, when you're talking about the, big, the bigger apparatus that we have, the modern apparatus, it shows you how, how tight it is to get these vehicles in and out of the station. And again, we just can't fly out at the doors to, to an emergency or a fire uh, without, without possibly striking the building or, or damaging, the, the, uh, damaging the apparatus. So for example, you see the, the ambulance here just creeping out and the mirrors on these particular vehicles, we actually had to modify from the, uh, the, what the dealer, dealer uh, says that we should um, just so it would fit in the station. But even by doing that, uh, you see how close it is. We get within an inch of striking the, uh, the door casing itself or the, uh, the overhead doors. Uh, the next slide, you'll see that uh, some of the, the interior, kind of like a, a virtual view of the inside the uh, apparatus bay, and you see how tight it is between the, the apparatus. Either it's probably one or two feet uh, of clearance area. You see the yellow hoses that are hanging down. That's a uh, vehicle, uh, vehicle exhaust removal system, and that takes the, uh, the, the bad diesel exhaust out of the building. Uh, knowing that it causes cancer. Uh, so you see you see how it's very, very tight in here. And uh, one of the reasons why, you know, a lot of times we'll have to pull out a truck just to uh, check the equipment in it because we just can't open the doors in the truck without striking it. Here's a slide that when we talk, when we talk about uh, cramped areas and in in we've out, out, outgrown our spaces, this is the, uh, the entrance area of where you would come in if you came in to visit us at the station. And this is the office area where our secretary works, our training officer, and our deputy chief and our fire prevention officer work in this, this general vicinity. And it's a very busy spot. Um, it's not very efficient, um, but it's, uh, we, we make do for now, but it's, it's, we definitely have outgrown our system. This area is our back hallway of the Church Street Station. This is where we store our, our uh, firefighter gear. And the firefighters get dressed here to go on the call, and then they go out to the apparatus area. You can see it's very, very tight. Um, it's tight quarters, and they almost have to time go choreograph or get the get their moves down uh, to to sync together so they don't smack each other. But uh, <laughs> you can see how the uh, it's very very tight. The next slide uh, shows actually is a it, it's a combination area. It's our it's our decon decontamination area. You see the sink there on the right, <clears throat> and then we also this is the where the hose tower is. We don't use the hose tower as as, as we did in the past uh, because all the newer modern hose we're able to. Uh, wash and put right back on the trucks. So it doesn't need to hang to dry anymore. 
in, in the same same area right here is our electrical area in our uh, flammable liquids area so it's not it's it's very cramped and it's not uh, it's not desirable whatsoever <coughs> So now, um, Rich, I know that the architect and the engineer, they, they put together a plan for the, uh, the Church Street station. And this, this one was kind of <coughs> unique in the sense of this is really where most of the administrative functions are, are conducted. You, you're, the secretary is there, training officer, as you mentioned, yourself. Um, this is really more, more or less the hub of, of the fire station. And, and if you can kind of talk through us what, what the design of this kind of entailed and, and really what, what features does it have that the current station doesn't. Right, and, and exactly right. We wanted to modify the, the administrative function in, in, in here so we're able to go on from today and into the future. So we have enough office space to, to um, do day-to-day -day work. And then the second part was to make sure that we had cruise quarters and storage and, and, uh, and also training, training rooms. So if you see on the right-hand side of this, this, uh, this proposed drawing of, of what you might see, on the second floor, you would see cruise quarters to accommodate uh, perhaps overnight, overnight, uh, overnight coverage for firefighters, and but more importantly, is a, is a training room, uh, training room. So we have classroom. We we do a just absolutely just a massive thousands of hours training every year for our firefighters and EMTs. So this would help us uh, provide that more effect, more effectively, but also it would second as a uh, backup emergency operations center for the town. Uh, for example, if the emergency operations center at the police department at forever, whatever re reason became unusable, uh, we would be able to use this as a, as a backup facility. So there aren't really any plans. You know, you mentioned uh, sleeping quarters. Right now, there's no plans to have um, uh, a, more, uh, a fire department that, that might have that. But right now, you have paramedics that, we, that we are there. We do have crews that stay overnight. We, we staff one ambulance overnight for right. part-time EMTs and paramedics. Uh, but it's not going to be long before, um, the, obviously you saw the graph where our call demand is going to increase, where we're going to we're definitely need a overnight. So this, uh, is a, this, is a, this is clearly a plan to deal with the future, not just the present. Yeah, needs. yeah well, when we talk to the architects, we says let's, let's look at a design that is not just good for today, but 30, 40, 40 years out. Well, right, and, and, and if we go by past practice, I mean, it could take you another 60 years to get a renovation, so right. um, it might make sense. Um, now we're going to be talking a little bit about the uh, Mast Road Station, and again, this is in the Pinardville section of town, and um, and I'm going to turn this over to Rich. If you could just you know give us an overview of the current situation. So the Mast Road Station was built in 1969, and it's right on Ma Mast Road in Pinardville, and uh, this station is a two-bay station, and that's it seems like it, it's bigger. It's got a little bit bigger doors, but it still can't accommodate uh, the larger apparatus. In fact, a number of years ago. Uh, when a larger truck uh, that was coming in from Bedford to cover yeah, our station while we're at while we're uh, busy at a fire um, struck the building because they thought they were the, these doors were a bit big enough to fit their truck and they weren't and it damaged their truck and damaged the station uh, in in the slide the next slide you'll be able to see that uh, again we're we're we're, we're space deprived um, in, in this particular case uh, you see an ambulance on the on the left and one of our engines on the right, and, the, and behind the ambulance is, is actually another engine. And it's not just a reserve engine, it's actually a, an engine that we rely on in day-to-day -day fire responses. So if a fire response came in uh, for this particular station, uh, and town-wide, they have to pull out the ambulance first in order to get the engine out to respond to the emergency. And uh, on the right, uh, in fact, see the back, the uh, previous slide, uh, you'll see, again, the gear, the gear area uh, crews have to get dressed uh, real quick. Uh, not everybody can get dressed all at once. They have to grab the gear and then jump on the trucks. So, you know, basically, I mean, I think it's fair enough to say that we have locker rooms at our schools that are probably bigger than this for a basketball team to get ready and much less now we're talking about firefighters with full gear trying to get Absolutely. ready. I mean, it's very, you know, being there and having seen it, it's very, it's, it's very difficult to understand how that's acceptable. In, in uh, NFPA, which is the National Fire Protection Eng Association, uh, they set standards for turnout times and response times. And the, 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 the desired time to get, to, when you receive the call, to time to, to start rolling with the trucks once you get at the station is within 90 seconds. Wow. And it's really tough to do that when you have to wait your turn just to get your gear on. 
The next slide, you'll see that uh, again, uh, we, you know, we're we're so cramped in the station uh, that we do do a few things uh, where it's not very desirable. On the left left hand side, you obviously you see the uh, the, uh, the yellow hose. That's the vehicle exhaust uh, extraction system, uh, but also the sink is where we decontaminate medical equipment and hazardous contaminated uh, equipment. In the same area on the back wall, we have oxygen tanks that are stored ready to go in an ambulance if we need to swap out some, some oxygen equipment. So in a, in a real situation, you, would, you really should keep these all separate uh, so you're not intermingling um, contaminants and a few other things. On the right, uh, you see uh, just a, it's our, it's our furnace room at, at the Mastro station. It's also a storage room and a laundry room. And again, it's not desirable whatsoever. In the next, next slide, you see the, the, uh, the proposed uh, drawing of what the uh, mass road station would look like. It's incorporating that larger door so we can fit the modern apparatus in there. and also integrates on a second floor um, better office spaces and uh, living quarters for crews. And we're going to be upgrading our training room that's on the second floor also. Uh, so it's integrating a lot of those things. But the, the big thing is the fact that the, uh, we're going to be improving the energy efficiencies um, in, in each of the stations. For example, on Mast Road, we've got a nat natural gas uh, pipeline that goes right in front of the station. We should be tapping that and utilizing the, 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 the natural gas that's usually obviously co cost less per, per uh, unit or gallon. Uh, than the oil that we currently right. use now. For example, uh, just to give an example, uh, the engineers walked through the station and they said, uh, "Do you realize that? Uh, do, you, do you realize that uh, our uh, uh, energy efficiency, on average, on, on the walls of these stations, equals to like an R value of a four? Oh my goodness! <laughs> and uh, so that's that's equivalent to almost like a shed, and uh, you're just hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging and bleeding, bleeding heat on a regular basis. I says, I know, and you know, I give an example for. Uh, just uh, recently in January, we had the uh, 10 degree weather on, on a day to day, day, base, day basis. The, uh, it costs us $100 a day in just heating fuel just on the mass road station. Wow. Well, if we could segue a little bit, um, this is going to be Article 18 on the warrant this, uh, this coming March. And uh, in terms of the uh, cost, Rich, if you can just give us, I know it's a $4.5 million bond. So uh, the uh, the board of selectmen has uh, has terms that um, it's going to be over what twenty years is that probably be mostly twenty year twenty year bond right and uh, it's four point five million dollars for the three stations remember it's all three stations and uh, includes the construction costs the equipment and contingencies that go along with it uh, now the wording of the bond allows uh, allows the selectmen to to hunt around the best um, best note for this for this uh, project. For example, if we find a government-backed bank loan that has a lower interest rate and uh, l lower fees, you know, we take advantage of that. Um, so it doesn't cost as much per year. Okay, so uh, from what I have gathered, uh, on a home that is assessed at $250,000, which I believe is higher than what the average is. I think the average home in Goffstown is assessed at around 210, 220. But if your home is assessed at $250,000, the first year of this bond is $65, uh, on your tax bill. Right. And then it's going to be level, and then it would, I would assume it starts to diminish slowly? Well, the, the bonds now, if you get to the New Hampshire bond, bond is it thing, level? You, you can have a level debt bond. So we, in this particular case, if you do, if we choose a level debt bond, um, it has a level payment pretty much for the whole 20, oh, that's 20 good. years. Yeah. So it's about, in this particular case, for $4.5 million, you're talking $350,000 a year. A couple of things too, when when you know when you're trying to be good stewards of, of tax money, um, and the fire department always tries to do that, is we uh, we also look to see if there's any bonds that are going to be going to be expiring in the coming in, in the coming years, and in uh, 2016 and 2017 there's a there's a couple of town bonds that are be expiring, which will free up about a, another two hundred and eighty thousand uh, dollars of of bond a year payments. Per oh, year. so this will be then. I'm not saying it's going to be a wash, but it would be. It would. It would help. It would help. Okay. It would help. So, um, if folks have additional questions, yeah, have where should they be going? Right. If they have any additional questions, uh, a lot of information is on the town's website. If you go on the town's website, it's www.gosstown.com. If you go to the fire department section, in on the left-hand side, you'll see right on the top it says fire station improvement. You know, open that up. 
and it's, it has all these uh, uh, proposed drawings of what the stations might look like on the inside. Uh, it also has the fire station committee's um, report in there, their final report that was approved by the Board of Selectmen. It also has a few other documents that might help you understand um, the need for, for this project. Okay, now for those folks who might not have access to a computer, how, are they, how could they get some information? They can get the personalized information by calling 497-3619. Uh, and uh, we welcome anybody, if they'd like a tour of any of the stations, please call that number, 497-3619, and ask for a tour. They will be happy to accommodate. All right. Well, thank you, Chief. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. And um, in, in wrapping up, uh, you know, one of the goals of, of this show is just to try to inform the public about, uh, you know, a Warren article, which I, I believe is a very important Warren article for the voters to consider. So please, you know, reach out to the fire department, check the website. If, need, if you need to, call, visit them. Uh, they'll be more than happy to, you know, to uh, give you a tour or to answer any of your questions. Um, but I just want to thank uh, Chief O'Brien for, for coming down to the studio and, and educating the, the public uh, on this very, very important warrant article. So again, I'd like to urge uh, everyone to be involved. And to be involved, that means that you really want to exercise your right to vote. And that is going to be on March 11th, which is a Tuesday. And you'll be voting at either the Bartlett School or Goffstown High School. So with that, I want to, uh, again, thank Chief O'Brien and thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please, please reach out to your town officials. Thank you. Mm -hmm.